Hello and welcome to the end of year special of the David Frankel Show. And I'd now like to welcome today's special guest, it's Rod Liddell. Oh no, wait, where are you going? Come back. So that was 2021. I mean, well, I don't know what I expected from this year, apart from being technically better than 2020, which it has been. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like January was like 10 years ago, but I also feel like nothing has happened and nothing's progressed or changed since then. It's not me being particularly funny or chipper, that's just honestly how I feel. Anyway, on with the show. So I started this year in Oman, I'd gone out in December for the winter holidays and then just stayed there when the UK went back into lockdown for two and a half months. Uh, you know, doing my course online and going off into the deserts and mountains and stuff at the weekends. I came back to Durham in March and then proceeded to do nothing for another three and a half months. And then, uh, just as the ch cherry on the cake of a really rubbish first year, I caught Covid just before I was supposed to leave college. In the meantime, my family left Oman, uh, came back to the UK, uh, there we were in a flat in Leeds for about two months overlooking the railway line, uh, which was great for me, because I could train spot, uh, but really annoying for the rest of the family who hated the noise. I went to Edinburgh with Zidma and Rebecca, then I went to Glasgow with my family, uh, I took the train all the way to Budapest and back, uh, which I've written quite a lengthy uh, piece about, the technicalities of the various routes, which you can go and read below if you're into that kind of thing. Second year has so far been much better than first year, although then again, uh, being grazed on the elbow is better than being kicked in the groin. With the restrictions lifted, uh, lectures and tutorials have been back in person, societies have been running, things have been open, I've been able to actually go out and meet and talk to other human beings. It's been nice having a semblance of a normal university experience this term, although there have been some fairly unusual or even extraordinary uh, events. Here to talk about first term with me some more is Kaylee. Hi, I'm Kaylee, and I'm David's friend and housemate. What have, we, what have we been up to this? It's been quite an eventful term, hasn't it? We went to Glasgow, so we decided to go along to some of the COP26 uh, protests in Glasgow at the beginning of November. How was that? What did you think of, what do you think of Glasgow, first of all? It was quite nice. So we did the big... a bizarre amount of anime shops. <laughs> there are a lot of anime shops in Glasgow. We did spend Friday night just going... Between the two protests, we did just sort of pop, pop our heads into all the anime shops, or probably not even all of them, as some of the anime shops of Glasgow. Yeah. We went to the youth, youth strike on Friday. We saw uh, Greta Thunberg and Vanessa McCarthy and various other youth activists and indigenous activists, which was quite interesting. And also, obviously, we met Rosie Jones. Yeah, we were on the last that was leg. pretty cool. That was really cool, yeah. I don't know about seeing Greta Thunberg, though. I'm only five foot, so it was more of a case of I heard her. <laughs> Just want to see. <laughs> but, yeah. Excuse Greta, there's. <laughs> well, you're taller than me, and if I remember um, correctly, even you tall, can tall, see properly. Tall person privilege, amongst everything else. So here's the clip of us on the last leg with Rosie Jones. What are you doing today? We've come to ask to inherit a livable planet, please. Me too! Yes. They cut out all of my talking. They did. I, unfortunately, unfortunately for you, I just had the, the snappy, memorable line of inhabitable planet, please. And yeah. they were like, yes, I like that line. Let's put that in and cut out everything else. We came across her again by accident. We were just like, oh, there's a gap. Oh, hello. <laughs> Not only did we meet Rosie Jones, in Glasgow. We met Rosie Jones in Glasgow twice. The first yeah. time they were just filming, uh, you just stopping uh, passers by and talk, talking to them and interviewing them on camera. And we just, we didn't, we, we just kind of wanted to go and say hello. So we just stopped to, to say hello to Rosie Jones. And the producers were like, oh, do you, do you want to be on the show? And we were like, yes. <laughs> do we want to yeah. be on the last leg? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. We do. I'm glad I asked. Hey, who are those guys in the high vis? <laughs> and you're just like, oh shit, that's the last leg crew. What else have we done this term? It's been it's been much more open. Everything's been kind mm. of relatively back to normal, COVID wise. There's not been restrictions on on society events and things. And and there's yeah. been Lumiere, of course. We went to Lumiere. Yeah, that was is, so good. Come up Lumiere in one sentence. What is Lumiere? It's a light fest. It's a bi-yearly light festival in Durham. That's like a really big 
Durham culture thing that everyone either loves or hates. Do people hate? <laughs> do people just hate it because they take up the whole city centre and basically cordon it off? I think that's why people hate it. Yes, the amount of dirt fest is that we're just like I can't get home. <laughs> I can't get to my college. I think it was quite fun now. I enjoyed it. I really liked the the one that was like the uh, the band with the, the band in the market square. Yeah, the light up stick man. That was pretty cool. The cathedral, that's always a good one. I went in in first year as well. Um so 2 years ago. I can't I still can't believe that they had the one that was like the project the wish tree. <laughs> the one that was like unfiltered. <laughs> what is your Christmas wish? And everyone either tweets or goes to a website and just writes something and it instantly appears on the screen. Yeah, no, there's no any, moderation, uh... no filter. And, and to top it all off, we went. So Kate, Kate's from South College. I'm from Van Milder. But Kaylee invited me to a Christmas formal, which was really oh. lovely. And it was nice. And it was a lovely way to finish the year. And nothing happened. It definitely wasn't it's fine. Something it was that completely uneventful. Ended up in the Daily bad. Mail multiple times. Or... What did happen at the Christmas formal? What, <laughs> in the words of somebody who was there who witnessed it? Uh, it was a shit show. <laughs> so, the principal of the college decided to invite this guy called um, Rod Little to give a speech. You may know him from such brilliant publications such as. Uh, should viewing child of porn be illegal? Um, you know, with marvelous quotes like, uh, I couldn't see myself becoming a teacher because uh, I couldn't not try and shag the kids at the, you know, soonest opportunity. Or uh, there was also the hit, if it was up to me, uh, I'd make the British voting day a holy day for Muslims so they couldn't vote. Yeah, lovely man, very respectable, great night. So here's what really happened at the South College Christmas Formal. Uh, Rod Little was invited as a guest of the college principal. This was not announced in advance. Nobody knew it was going to happen until we were all sat down uh, immediately before the dinner. He was introduced and then after dinner, about an hour later, he got up to make his speech, at which point a number of students immediately walked out of the room. The college principal shouted, South College believes in free speech, pathetic, at them as they left. A number of other students, including myself, walked out uh, during the course of the speech, uh, in which a number of quite offensive and inflammatory things were said. After the uh, event, there was a confrontation between the college principal and a number of the students in some clips that have been shared online. I'm not going to put them here, but they're out there if you are interested in going to find them. And since then, the whole thing has spiralled with uh, a lot of mainstream media coverage, including the Daily Mail, who've taken a particularly, particular interest in the story. College principal has uh, apologised for calling students pathetic as they left, but has not apologised for inviting Rod Little in the first place. It's also worth noting uh, that the university is running its own investigation into the events, which are due to conclude mid-January. And it's been widely reported, although not confirmed as far as I can tell, that the college principal has been barred from actually speaking about it until this investigation is concluded. Yeah, I just love how people who don't go to South College Christmas formals or don't attend Durham University have a lot of very strong opinions about freedom of speech and freedom of and entitlement to a platform and all that. But obviously, the South, the, uh, I don't know if there's been a poll, but my anecdotal experience is that the, the vast majority of South College students uh, appear to be quite annoyed about this happening. And there was a protest, of course, that we were at. Uh, yeah, um, the, the Daily Mail sent a photographer along to on the yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, they snuck, uh, they snuck a photographer to it. Like a photographer in. Well, Literally. Was I didn't see... protest. A lot of them are calling for the president of South, uh, the principal, uh, pardon me, of the, of South College to resign. Well, I mean, what do, what, do you, what do you think about that as a South College student? Honestly, originally I was like, oh, well, you know, she should be given a chance to hear what we have to say. And then, you know, reflect on it and be like, okay, yeah, I messed up, you know? So I was like, you know, he's going to wake up the next morning. We, we've all had those times where we've been like, oh, wow, I can't believe I did that after I drank last night. That was stupid of me, you know? The kind of thing you wouldn't normally do if you Oh, were, my God. Like, what, what did I do last night? You invited Rod Little to a college formal and then insulted your students. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> but I think kind of by the end of that week, so like, the protest was on Wednesday, yeah. and I think 
by the time it hit the Friday, it had been a week since it happened. And there was still like nothing from him. He oh he issued one apology, and that apology was for um, calling students pathetic because mm-hmm. he was like, I should not have called them pathetic. You know they have the right to walk out just as much as my guest had the right to speak. And I was like, yes, there you go. But there's still so much you've not addressed. You know, to his why apology, was he invited in the first place? Yeah, that's what it, um, that's what it all boils down to, to really. Yeah, why he thought it, would, it was appropriate to, you know, invite someone who openly hates gay people, who openly thinks trans people aren't even real, you know, who openly hates Muslims, who, you know, openly said to us all that, you know, children uh, of single parents should be uh, taken by the state. It's not what you want to hear. Why did he decide to invite here. him? Yeah. Why did he decide to invite him? Why was we not told that he was inviting him until, like, after we sat down? We knew that it wasn't a last minute, you know, oh no, my guest is ill, I guess I'll invite Rod Little, because Rod wrote an article in The Spectator a month beforehand about how he was looking forward to coming to Durham and seeing the prostitutes. The question is really, did... Did he not tell everyone that Rod Little was the guest because he knew it would cause an outrage and therefore was it? Was it a deliberate provocation? Did he do this on purpose to piss people off? He's known Rod Little for like 20 to 30 years. He knows the kind of shit that Rod says. This was 100% deliberate. Like, mm. Yeah, I don't, think it, could, no I don't way. think it could have gone any other way. As soon as he said, you know, and tonight's special guest, Rod Little, I, w- I my first thought was, what? What? Oh, dear. I remember, oh I remember dear. that. This is going to go very out. badly. I remember that because I hadn't heard of him before he sat down. And you were just mm. like, oh, no. And I was just like, what? And <laughs> you're just like, I've heard this guy's name before. And I was just like, oh. And you were like, yeah. And not in a good way, I don't think. I was like, oh. <laughs> So, you know, I was expecting some kind of, like, conservative drivel of, like, economic conservative, you know, not uh, paraphrasing here, but if you have a dick, you're a man, deal with it, you know? That's not that quite... That is what he said. Yeah, which long, dangling me, course, penis. <laughs> which brings me, of course, to the final twist in the story, which is my own involvement in some of the media coverage, because... <gasps> I yes. was invited as, the, you know, somebody noticed some of my tweets, the offer for me to appear on talk radio. And I took the bait, which was stupid. It was it's a bad idea because it was basically what just the I had these two right wing radio hosts basically just try, just yell at me and try and corner me into making a tit out of myself, which I didn't. I held my cool. I sort of kept my cool and held my ground. Uh. But it was, yeah, it was and then they and then they put you off when they realised you weren't rising to it. But like, I didn't know because you know, I don't watch. Talk, I didn't know exactly what it was going to be like because I don't listen to talk radio normally because I've got better things to do with my life. Oh man, it was pretty crazy. Apart from that, though, it's been a good. Time. It was a pretty good first term. It was pretty all right, you know. We were allowed to go out and actually do things. We went out to a few bars, and Christmas was great as well. Because I got to eat a Christmas dinner without listening to Rod Little. Those are the best kind of Christmas dinners. Yes. Well, Kaylee, to quote James Whale and Ash off Talk Radio, you've been absolutely useless to this programme. I don't like you. Goodbye. Only joking, obviously. (laughs) Have a very happy new year and thanks for coming on. In December, I went down to London for the weekend with my family to see our cousins. Uh, Amongst other things, I also rode the Northern Line a new extension to Battersea Power Station. And now I'm here in our new house in Thursk, uh, which we moved into a couple of weeks ago. It's been a whole palaver, uh, basically, <laughs> my, the rest of my family have been kind of hopping from flat to flat in, in around North Yorkshire for the last couple of months. It's been a bit of a nightmare, to be honest. Buying a house is, is very complicated. We also have a container of stuff that's been shipped over from Muscat, uh, which has been sitting in a warehouse in Southampton for over a month now and still hasn't arrived as of filming. So what's been going on here in the UK? Uh, Well, for many months now, we've had the combination of Brexit and coronavirus wrecking havoc on UK logistics, with just about everything from gas prices to turkeys and Transpeyline Express being disrupted. 
Tory MP Owen Patterson was caught breaking uh, lobbying rules by the Parliamentary Standards Committee and given a 30-day suspension. Rather than just accepting it, the government decided to use to burn all of their political credit trying to basically get him out of this punishment and reform the Standards Committee to you know, stop them from doing their jobs, uh, which backfired massively. The government U-turned completely and uh, Owen Patterson ended up resigning his seat in North Shropshire, which then went up for a by-election. Now, North Shropshire is a seat that has been Tory for about two million years. Uh, in the last election, Owen Patterson won it for the Conservatives with 62% of the vote share. So this is pretty much an untouchable seat. So it came as a pretty big embarrassment to the Conservative Party to lose the seat to the Liberal Democrats. Boris Johnson and his government are also in hot water after multiple reports of parties that took place in and around 10 Downing Street during the, last, during the last lockdown when tens of millions of people were told to stay at home to protect the NHS and save lives and weren't allowed to meet other people indoors. In case you still haven't seen it somehow, here's former Downing Street spokesperson Allegra Stratton having a laugh about one of these parties in a mock Downing Street press conference. I've Ed. just seen reports on Twitter that there was a Downing Street Christmas party on Friday night. Do you recognise those reports? <laughs> I went home. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. Um, uh, uh, Would the Prime Minister condone uh, having a Christmas? <laughs> What's the answer? I don't know. I didn't want the party. It was cheese and wine. Just clear it up. Was cheese and wine all right? No. It was a business no. meeting. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> this is recorded. <laughs> This fictional party was a business meeting <laughs> and it was not socially distanced. So yeah, that's where we are now and all that brings us nicely to here today, the 31st of December 2021. Looking back at a year defined by a viral pandemic, a lockdown in the spring, a relatively normal summer and then a, wa a wave of a new more infectious strain right at the last minute just spreading all over the UK just before Christmas with senior government staff in trouble for breaking the lockdown rules they applied to everyone else. Does anyone else feel a bit of deja vu? Gee, I wonder what the next year's end of year special is going to look like. Which brings me to our favourite game. It's Place Your Bets. There are five questions, everybody gets £10,000 to bet on their various answers, and we have to guess what the world is going to look like in a year's time on the 31st of December 2022. Let's meet our contestants. I'm David Frankel. Hi, I'm Hadassa, and I forgot the name of my Instagram account again, but David can put it there. Um, and yes, disclaimer, I'm fully aware that I have clumps of glue in my hair. Um, I was in the hospital five days ago, and they put glue in my hair, and I've washed it three times, and it won't come out, and I can't brush it because the glue is getting in the way, so. I am Duncan Friedberg. Sound engineer, magical person. Not really magical, I can't play magic. Hello, I'm Ziv. You may remember me from many years ago when I had bad hair. Hello, hello, it's uh, Gareth Ennis off of um, Twitter and YouTube. Uh, you can uh, watch Rail Matter on, on Wednesday evenings at 7pm literally every week. It, it's unstoppable, every week for forever. Hi, I'm Jen. You might know me as Jen on the Move. Um, I run my YouTube channel on Transport Things. And you'll find me on Twitter tweeting mainly about grey boxes, coffee cups, and a fair amount of cats. Hello, David. I'm Andraj, and I take part in second year in the running of your New Year's Eve quiz. Uh, I'm Joel. I used to be a big trade spotter, but now I mostly do music things. I still have a trade spotting YouTube channel, but I very occasionally post videos on too, so you can check that out if you'd like to. Culture. I am Cooperplay Will, Cooperplay underscore Will on Twitter, and we are on a different 313. Hello, I'm Liam, and today I'll be joining in with Place Your Bets. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's Liam Drawer underscore photography, and YouTube is the Children's Drain Spotters. Hello, my name is Baron, and I'm David's dad. Question one, and bringing back an old classic Who is the Prime Minister of the UK? It might be a bit of a cliche at this point, but I'm putting £4,000 on Rishi Sunak. We're going to have to go, despite everything, with still Boris Johnson, and I will put 2000 on that. See, that's a difficult one, because last year we all thought Boris Johnson was going to quit, but he didn't, or get sacked or something, but he didn't, so... It's a difficult one. I'm going to say Keir Starmer, 
because I think there's going to be a general election called and I'm going to put £2,000 on that. Um, Boris Johnson just can't seem to get out of office at the moment, despite the million and one parties. Um, but I have a feeling that eventually he will just succumb to his own wounds and will have someone even worse like Michael Gove in charge. And I'm going to bet 3000 on that one. I'm going to say it's unfortunately still Boris Johnson because he's like Teflon. And I'm pretty confident in that, so I'm going to bet five grand on it. That's an easy question to answer. The, uh, the answer is, of course, Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, I'm going to wager £5,000 on that. Uh, Rishi Sunak. But I don't think he will have been the one to directly succeed Boris. There will have been somebody else in the middle. And I want to put two grand on that. Uh, it's Liz Truss. I'm putting five grand on that. I'm, I think it's going to still be Boris Johnson, um, and I'm putting... Five thousand pounds on that. I'm going to go Rishi Sunak. I'm going to place a thousand pounds on that one. I'm going to put three grand on Rishi Sunak. I don't really know much about politics, but I know his name and I think that he's rich, so... Question two, what are the latest COVID-19 restrictions? For two thousand pounds, I'm again guessing that masks are still mandatory on public transport and in shops. What are the current UK COVID regulations? Um, I'm saying that uh, only people with two properties and five dogs are allowed to travel across county borders. I'm putting a grand on that. Well, I think the government will have completely wiped their hands on everything and they won't care. We'll be in the wave of another variant that's ripping its way through the country, but I don't believe there will be any restrictions, not even mandatory face masks. And I'm so confident on that one, that I want to put five grand on it. I think we will be entering lockdown again. I think another booster jab will be available. And I think we will be preparing all of this in preparation for the Upsilon variant. I'm going to say it's pretty similar to what is now. They're probably not going to do anything. We, we could be having like crazy increases like we're having now and we still wouldn't do anything. Uh, we, looks like we're going for a living with COVID situation. So I'm going to say we're still living with COVID. I'm going to say no restrictions. Um, and I'm going to place the thousand pounds on that. I'm fairly confident I'm going to put three grand that masks are still mandatory in NHS settings, so like in hospitals when nurses come to visit patients at home, that kind of stuff. But I'm going to put six thousand on there being no regulations at all. I think the government has doubled down on vaccine passports, so there won't be many restrictions for vaccinated people, but I think there'll be a lot of restrictions on unvaccinated. But because it's COVID, I'm not very confident, so I'm only going to bet a £1,000 on it. This time last year, again, we all thought that, some of us haven't watched the last video, we all thought that there was going to be a no restrictions, COVID would be gone, done, the vaccine wouldn't work. But, um, yeah, look where we are now. Um, I think that this time next year, there's going to be another variant that's going to cause all this all over again. It's going to happen every winter, it's going to become like the flu, and they'll be getting us to have the booster again. And again, I'm going to place £3,000 on that. Now, I was pretty good last year with my guess of it will be just masks. And to be honest, seeing as the way it's going, I'm going to go and say it's, it will be just masks again. And I'm going to put 2000 on that one. Well, we burned through the tears and the circuit breakers and the plan Bs. So I'm guessing it's going to be scale seven. And it entails that you are only allowed to drive your car on every odd Thursday. And I'm going to wager £2,000 on that. Question number three. Which British politician has just made a complete ass out of themselves and how? Uh, I am guessing that Grant Shapps has made an ass out of himself by claiming that building new motorways is greener than high-speed rail because we'll all be driving electric cars soon. And I'm putting £2,000 on that. It's going to be Matt Hancock. And the reason why Matt Hancock is in the news again is because he was able to avoid being in the news for a whole year and he needs to sign this end of life. And ever since his app, the Matt Hancock app has been stopped, he has had a hard time reaching out to his core constituency. I'm going to wager a thousand pounds on that. I'm going to say Dominic Raab because he's admitted accidentally that the government has been paying off journalists for favourable coverage in light of their most recent scandal. And I'm pretty confident with that one, so I'm going to bet £2,000 on it. 
uh, which British politician has just made a complete arse of themselves um, and how? Uh, it's Keir Starmer. Uh, he's stuck standing in front of a, a, a set of automatic doors uh, a, a little in, um, in Loughborough um, because the doors refuse to acknowledge his sentience. Um, I'm putting three grand on that. Seems pretty likely to me. But to be honest, all of them, they will have all made a complete arse of themselves. But if I had to be more specific, I'm going to say Pretty Patel making a suggestion like building an island in the middle of the channel to house asylum seekers. And I'll put a thousand on that. So I'm going to say that is Jacob Rees-Mogg. Um, and it's because he wore pyjamas to the House of Commons for a PM's questions. I'm going to place a thousand pounds on that. I'm going to put one grand on Rishi Sunak for making some unsavoury budget cuts. I don't know how, but Charles II. No, wait, wrong plague. One. That is going to have to be Boris Johnson and how. Let me count the ways I'm going to have a guess at doing something like creating a hundred new lords because um, they weren't doing what he asked him to. I put 500 on that. Well, my easiest bet will be Pretty Patel has um, said something about the Human Rights Act not being strict enough and it implies to uh, immigrants, and I'm going to bet 1,000 on this one. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be like one of the Tories. It's obviously going to be one of the Tories, I don't know which, but they're going to be one of the... They're going to say something that's going to cause... They're going to say like they had a party. I'm going to use this as example. They're saying going to have a party, but in reality, it's just a business meeting with cheese and wine. But I don't know which one. I'm just going to say one of the Tories, I'm going to put £1,000 on that. Question number four. What is Durham University's latest scandal? A student has gone on GB News and is trying to cancel a lecturer for saying that the British Empire was racist. And I'm putting £2,500 on that. I don't know anything about Durham, so I'm going to put a grand on it coming out that David Frankel has secretly been funding the anti-HS2 campaign. They have, uh, they've invited the reanimated corpse of Heinrich Himmler uh, to speak about press freedom. I'm putting £500 on that one. Their latest scandal is they're teaching people how to sext. I'm going to place £1,000 on that one. Um, I'm going to put one grand on some kind of disability rights scandal. Um, I don't really know much about Durham University, but I know that strikes are a thing. It's controversial in universities, so maybe like the staff at Durham decided not to strike next year. It's controversial. Put £2,000 down on that. My bet is that they would invite someone racist to talk about, uh, to, well, basically just to, to speak at, uh, at something. Is it because, you know, homophobia was uh, a good hit last time, wasn't it? So, just gonna go racist this time. I'm gonna bet uh, 2,000 on this one. The Vice Chancellor has been caught insinuating that any students who complain about rent increases should be docked points in assignment. And I'm going to bet £1,500 on that one. I don't know this one because I don't know anything about the university or anything. A chlamydia outbreak, and I'm going to place another £1,000 on that. What is Durham University's latest scandal? I think that's a little unfair because Durham University is a fine institution which doesn't usually have scandals. But I'm going to say it's somehow getting wrapped up in the whole House of Lords scandal thing by several of their um, people getting them um, ennobled and maybe rejecting it, or maybe accepting it when it didn't take place, or something along those lines. I'll put 500 on that as well. I don't know. Is it has to do with a statue? Maybe maybe there is a statue again. It's going to be a statue, isn't it? And I'm going to wager 500 pounds on that. And finally, question number five. Who is Pete Davidson dating this week? I'm putting my remaining 500 pounds on Taylor Swift. For £1,000, who is Pete Davidson dating this week? Well, I haven't heard of him since Doctor Who, which was not his finest turn. I think Tom Baker was always my doctor. Who is he dating? I'm going to go with Joanna Lumley. Well, we haven't heard from her in a while. Kind of slipped under the radar a bit. I think, you know, she could be doing something else, and that something else could be Pete Davidson. I'm going to say Miley Cyrus uh, for £1,499. Oh, this is a good one. This is a saucy one. If he's not locked up, locked up in jail by now for having too many uh, partners, I don't know. Screw it. I'm going to say Elmo. 
Yeah, the, the remaining money I have. I'm going to put two grand on that he's still single. Uh, it's Brenda from Bristol, famous for saying, oh, no, not again about another general election. I'm only putting 500 quid on that because, you know, uh, there are a lot of women in the world that Pete Davidson is working his way through. I mean, first we've got to ask the question, who is Pete Davidson? Hang on, Google. Who is Pete Davidson? I have no idea. I'm going to say Kim Kardashian. Um, and I guess I've got to put a grand on that. Question five. I honestly had absolutely no idea who Pete Davidson was, so I had to look it up. So my guess is probably a bit far-fetched. Um, so I've gone for, he's dating Ivanka Trump. Um, because I'm so not very confident in that one, I'm only going to put £500 on it. David, who the hell is Pete Davidson? I have no idea who he is, but um, you know what? I'll just put 2000 that he is going to date Caroline Ansel. Kylie Jenner. I'm going to paste the rest of my money, which I think is £3,000. I haven't been keeping track. Uh, I'm going to go with the reanimated corpse of Liza Minnelli, and it's, uh, I'm going to wager £500 on that. Well, there we have it. Who won? Obviously, we'll find out next year. If you want to see who won last year's game of Place Your Bets, press the link here. And that is all from me. Uh, I am now working on a new episode of Trade News. It's going to be quite a big one. Uh, hopefully I will get that out in the first week of 2022. Uh, but that is going to be the last you'll probably hear from me for a while. It's going to be quiet on here just because I'm very busy uh, with uni work and uh, placement year applications and things. Uh, I will be back properly on the channel in the summer where I'll be talking a little bit more about the future of the channel. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Have a very happy new year and please subscribe.